Whether you are switching from Photoshop or Affinity Photo is the first editing software you've ever touched. Jumping into a new program can be both confusing and frustrating. Luckily, however, Affinity Photo is not only a great Photoshop alternative, but thanks to its intuitive UI, it's great for beginners as well. We'll be looking at the basics here, showing you how to customize your workspace, work with Affinity's adjustment layers and brushes, as well as give you some helpful tips for exporting for both print and web. This quick start guide will have you creating and editing your own photos in no time. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus. Let's get started. But first, let me tell you where all the images we'll be using today can be found and downloaded. EnvatoElements.com is my go-to place for stock photos, fonts, graphics, and music. Whether it's for image editing or video editing, they always have me covered. Check out the links in the video description below. Now, before you can edit an image, you have to bring it into the program itself. This is as easy as going to where your file is located on your computer and then clicking and dragging and dropping it into Affinity Photo. Alternatively, however, you can choose to set up your own canvas by selecting New Document on the opening splash screen or by going to File New. From here, they will give you several presets to choose from in the Type drop-down menu, which will help guide you in the right direction. Personally, I create everything so that it's ready to print and then size down if needed. You always want to size down as opposed to up. This means a canvas as big as possible with a DPI of 300, which is the ideal printing range, and a color profile of sRGB. Don't worry too much about color profiles just yet. Just know that sRGB is the world's default color space as it is the most commonly used color profile. But once you have your canvas set up, you can then drag and drop your first images onto it. Now, one of the first things I like to do in any program that lets me customize my workspace is set everything up just the way I like it. I especially recommend doing this with Affinity Photo, given that it lets you customize everything from your UI color to both the side and top toolbars. First, adjust the interface colors by going to Edit, Preferences, User Interface. I'd start off by deciding if you want to keep the default dark UI or switch to the light UI. Next, I'd go for the UI Gamma, which allows you to control just how dark or light you want your UI to be. As you can see, I like to keep things nice and dark, but it's completely personal preference. Finally, go ahead and adjust your background gray level. I prefer a flat black color, but choose what suits you and your eyes best, whatever's easiest on the eyes. Second, I go and change up the top and side toolbars. If you are fine or frankly indifferent with the current toolbar setups, then you can go ahead and not worry about it. However, if you are like me and are incredibly picky about what is where, go ahead and take a good 10 to 15 minutes to set everything up to your liking. Customize the side toolbar by going to View, Customize Tools, here, you can add, subtract, and rearrange all of your editing tools by simply dragging and dropping, along with deciding just how many columns of tools you would like. You can also customize the uh, very top toolbar or hide it entirely by going to View, Customize, Toolbar. You can finish up refining your workspace by adding other tool windows by going to View Studio and then clicking any of the common tools and adjustments you might use, such as brush, swatches, colors, or adjustments, for example. Then group and arrange them how you see fit. I personally like to keep my tools and layers to the left uh, while keeping my adjustments to the right as I use layers so much, often over a hundred per composite, I like to give them as much vertical space as I can. I also prefer my layers to be on the left as it feels more natural, likely as I read left to right. I guess that makes sense in my head. This is a very untraditional workspace setup. Almost everyone keeps their layers to the right and this is the default in both Photoshop and Affinity Photo. However, I recommend giving it a try. It's worked for me for almost 10 years now, after all. Quick disclaimer, if you are a first time photo editor, I'd actually recommend just keeping all of the default settings for now until you get used to the tools and how they work and develop your own workflow. I will be keeping my workspace for this video set to default, so it's easier to follow along as my personal workspace is quite, quite customized and is a one for one replica of my Photoshop workspace. 
Next up, let's look at how to move, crop, and size your images once they are dropped onto your canvas. Cropping is as simple as selecting the crop tool, which shortcut is C, and then clicking and dragging one of the eight crop points that will appear. Everything that is tinted will be cropped out once you hit the blue apply button. If you need to simply move your images, let's say from the bottom of the canvas to the top of the canvas, you'll want to use the move tool, which shortcut key is V. You will also use the move tool to resize, rotate, or flip an image, all by clicking and dragging one of the eight blue anchor points that will appear. Affinity Photo will keep the photo's original aspect ratio while resizing. However, if you wish to resize it freely, then you can go ahead and hold down shift while resizing. Now, you may be noticing a, a number of similarities between Affinity Photo and Photoshop, or maybe you are even considering making the big switch and that's why you're watching this video. Well, I have the perfect video for you. Go check out my top eight Affinity Photo features that might just convince you to switch from Photoshop for even more insight and comparisons between the two. But now let's look at every photo editor's best friend, the adjustment layers. If you would like to have your adjustments handy, you can go to view studio adjustments and a list of all of Affinity Photo's mini adjustment layers will come up. Alternatively, however, you can also access all adjustment layers by clicking the half circle icon found towards the bottom of your layers panel. As you can see, there are quite a few adjustment layers to choose from. So to save some time, I'm going to just highlight a couple. So some adjustment layers will do precisely what their names imply they do. For instance, uh, a fan favorite, the, <laughs> I guess if I'm, I'm a fan and it's one of my favorites, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's anyone else's favorites, but the color balance layer balances color. Uh, you can bring in more reds, greens, blues, or pump up the yellows. By default, this is set to affect only the midtones of an image, so anything that isn't a shadow or a highlight. To change this, pop up to the top and look under tonal range, and then you will see the highlights and also the shadows. And then of course, you can make multiple color range adjustment layers, giving the highlights, shadows, and midtones their own dedicated color balance layer, which I actually recommend. Not only does this keep things more organized, it gives you the ability to independently move and rearrange them around your layers, giving you more control and more options. Then there are the, uh, the less obviously named but well-known adjustment layers, such as the curves adjustment. In the curves adjustment, you adjust points throughout an image's tonal range. Initially, the image's tone is represented as a straight diagonal line on a graph. The upper right area of the graph is the highlights, and the lower left area represents the shadows. You add control points to the line, and moving them will then change the tones of the image. The most common and basic curves adjustment is called an S-curve, which pumps up the contrast of an image and is named after the S-like shape you create using anchor points, as seen here. Adjustment layers are my absolute favorite tools to just play around with. Mixing and matching, playing with settings, you can even change their layer mode which we will cover more here in a second. Because next up, we have brushes, layers, and as I said, layer modes. These are also a photo compositor's best friend. So you know how to bring an image into Affinity Photo, but what if you need just a blank layer? All you have to do is go down to the bottom of your layer panel and hit the icon that looks almost like a checkerboard. That will create a new pixel layer ready to be painted on. Now, if you have multiple layers, in order to rearrange them, simply click and drag and drop, you know, either up or down, depending on the order you'd like the layers to be placed. Now, to paint on this layer, you will need to first select the paintbrush tool, and then open up the brush panel to have access to all of your and Affinity Photo's default brushes. Open the brush panel by going to View, Studio, Brushes. Once you choose your brush, you can paint. Change the brush's color by clicking the top circle found towards the bottom of your tool's toolbar. You'll see two circles overlapping each other. 
You can select two active colors and switch between the two by hitting the curved arrow located to the right side of the circles. You can also adjust the opacity, flow, hardness, and if you have a drawing tablet, the pin pressure and stabilizer all in the brush tool's top toolbar that will appear once the brush tool is active. A quick tip, a convenient shortcut for brushes is using the two bracket keys to adjust the sizing of the brush. The left bracket decreases the size while the right bracket increases the size. Next up, we have Affinity Photo's layer modes, and just like their adjustment layers, there are a ton to choose from. To change a layer's layer mode, select the layer you want, and then go to the top of the layers panel. There you will see the layer's opacity, and to the right, you will see the word normal. If you click on normal, you will get a dropdown of all the different layer modes. You can change the layer mode of any layer, including painted, image, text, adjustment, and shape layers. The best way to learn what a layer mode does is just by going through all of them and cycling through them. Paint, play, and experiment. The combinations and results are endless. But for one example, a popular use is to paint shadows and lighting using a mixture of screen, multiply, soft light, and overlay layer modes. So it's all about mixing and matching. If you plan on doing any kind of compositing work, you will want to become very, very familiar with layer masks. To add a layer mask to an image, first click the layer you would like to add a mask to, and then go to the bottom of your layers panel. Click the icon of a circle inside of a square, and bam, you have just added a layer mask to your layer. Now, you can mask out the parts of that image using a black brush. Masking is similar to erasing, with the only real difference being at any time you can mask something back in using a white brush. Think of it as black erases while white restores. You can use any shape brush to mask anything out, or mask back in as well. And you can of course add layer mask to any type of layer, whether it be a shape layer, a text layer, or a regular pixel layer. They are very versatile. But now, finally, you are done with your image and you are ready to show it off to the world, whether it be digital or real life. You can do this by going to File, Export, and all of your exporting settings will come up. What you choose from here depends completely on what you intend to do with the image. Do you want to print this image or maybe just post it to the web for now? If the image is large and you want to post it to the web, you will likely want to shrink it down some. I tend not to go smaller than a width of 1080 pixels, but it all depends. However, if your image is large and you are printing it, you are better off uh, likely not even touching the size at all, or maybe even enlarging it. Though, I actually suggest doing that before you export it so you can sharpen things if necessary. As for what you will save your image as, what file format, I personally tend to save everything as a .png, no matter if I'm sending something to be printed or posting it to the web. However, if you do choose to save something as a JPEG, remember to set the quality to 100% unless you need the file to be a smaller size for whatever reason. And you may also notice that Affinity Photo has an export to a .psd option, which is very handy for any of you Photoshop users out there. I really like that feature, so I always tend to point it out. Once you have all your settings ready and set, go ahead and hit export. And there you have it, a quick start guide to Affinity Photo, leaving you ready and prepared to start creating for yourself. Don't feel the need to go big the first time. If this is your first editing software, take it nice and slow. Just There's no self-destruct button in Affinity Photo that I've found yet. Don't be afraid to experiment and just mix and match and wonder what this does and wonder what happens if I mix this and this. That is the best way to learn any program is to just play with it. If you like this video and would like to see more, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. And if you haven't already, click the little bell to be notified of any new and exciting videos. If you are looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other wonderful tutorials that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. I'm Abby Esparza, see you next time.